the senator from Kentucky. Republicans like to mock modern monetary theory, the idea that government can print money with impunity, that government can spend whatever it wants without the need to tax. Modern monetary theory is basically the Dick Cheney deficits don't matter crowd, trussed up with a new fancy title. Most Republicans rightly lampoon this quackery, that is, when they're not practicing the quackery themselves. Today, many of these same Republicans will vote for a bill that makes modern monetary theory look like child's play in comparison. The monster spending bill presented today is not just a deficits don't matter disaster, it is everything Republicans say they don't believe in. This bill is free money for everyone. Proponents don't care if you're fully employed or own your own house or own your own business. Free money for everyone, they cry. And yet, if free money were the answer, if money really grew on trees, why not give more free money? Why not give it out all the time? Why stop at $600 a person? Why not $1,000? Why not $2,000? Maybe these new free money Republicans should join the Everybody Gets a Guaranteed Income Caucus. Why not $20,000 a year for everybody? Why not $30,000? If we can print up money with impunity, why not do it? The Treasury can just keep printing the money. That is, until someone points out that the emperor has no clothes and that the dollar no longer has value. To so-called conservatives who are quick to identify the socialism of Democrats, if you vote for this spending monstrosity, you are no better. When you vote to pass out free money, you lose your soul and you abandon forever any semblance of moral or fiscal integrity. So the next time you see Republicans in high moral dudgeon claiming and complaining about spending of Democrats and socialism, remind them. Remind them if they supported this monstrous bill that really the difference between the parties is less Adam Smith versus Marx and more Marx versus Engels. How bad is our fiscal situation? Well, the federal government brought in $3.3 trillion last year and spent $6.6 trillion. The deficit last year, a record-busting $3.3 trillion. If you're looking for more COVID bailout money, we don't have any. The coffers are bare. We have no rainy day fund. We have no savings account. Congress has spent all the money long ago. The economic damage from this pandemic is not the reason for this runaway spending. This spending's been going on for decades. Every year, even before we get to all the extra COVID free money, we've been spending a trillion dollars we don't have. Today's money is gone. So Congress is spending tomorrow's money. The spending chart is a red line of red ink that goes on forever. When we talk about spending tomorrow's money, it's, just not, it's not just the money that we need next month, it's the money we might need in a decade. It's the money we will need in one, two, three generations for now for national defense, for infrastructure. This is the money that your children and your grandchildren will pay back with interest. The deficit doubling and tripling. Under George Bush, it went from $5 trillion to $10 trillion. Under President Obama, it went from 10 to $20 trillion. We're now at $27 trillion, but we're adding it at a trillion dollars a year before we get to this COVID budget-busting bailout. Every taxpaying American already owes over $136,000, and they're staring at projections into the future that show no end. We are $27 trillion in debt today. How do we expect a child to have the economic opportunity when this crushing debt is their inheritance from Congress? The numbers are mind-boggling. It's hard to conceive of what a billion dollars is, much less a trillion dollars. How big is a billion? Well, a billion seconds ago was 1988, and Reagan was president. A billion minutes ago, 
Jesus walked the shore of the Sea of Galilee. A billion hours ago, men still lived in caves. But a billion dollars ago was just 80 minutes ago. A billion dollars ago at the rate Congress spends money was just 80 minutes ago. All of this should be setting off alarm bells. But the only alarm bells in Congress are sounding the alarm for more spending and more debt. No cuts, no offsets, no pay-fors, no prioritization. Just print it up. Print up more money and give it out to everybody because it's free money. Come and get yours. Well, the getting's good, but it leads to a mountain of debt. Spend all this money and leave the future to figure itself out. John Maynard Keynes was once asked, what about the long run? He said, in the short run, you, know, you can make a stimulus. You can print money and you can give it to everybody. And Maynard Keynes, his response was, in the long run, we'll all be dead. No concern for the future, only for the immediate. Our budget deficit for 2020 was $3.3 trillion, but this new spending package will also give us another $2 trillion in the next fiscal year. By refusing to acknowledge the debt crisis, we are only hastening the day of economic reckoning. Total debt was 55% of GDP just 20 years ago. Today, it's 128% of GDP. So our annual or our total debt is more than our GDP, 128% of our GDP. The World Bank estimates there's a tipping point of debt to GDP at about 77%. Every percentage point costs another tenth or so of economic growth. So every year we're giving up somewhere between 5 to 8% of growth every year because of this burden of, death, of, of debt. This is thousands of jobs every year, tens of thousands of jobs that we lose because of this burden of debt. We are borrowing and worsening this debt crisis in part because too many governors and mayors have imposed heavy-handed restrictions that crush business.